are in studio, and our studio today is the Pacific Island Ethnic Art Museum with executive chef, my boy, Mr. Mike Ford. Mike, What's let's up, talk. Guys? What's up? That was a great. That was a great last two sessions. We were yeah. jamming, having a good time. We lost track of time until the boss. We did. Made sure we knew the time management. Right. Make I sure want to come back, back so let's stay on track. That's right. Okay. <laughs> so, what are the best lessons you've learned? through this journey of this culinary life. Hmm. You talked about preparation, right? Having everything in place that, what was that? What was that? Mise en place. Mise en place. Mm -hmm. So what are, what are one to three other major life lessons you're like, man, this is big for me that I've learned? Wow. That is a, that's a heavy hidden question. And it's loaded. It but is. Just it break is loaded. Down, break down what you start to think about. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is just being ready. Just, <laughs> One of my buddies that I grew up with, he always gives me the this talk, pep talk of, if you stay ready, you never have to get ready. Yeah, <laughs> shout out Sugar Free. That's a Pomona right. term, just so you don't know. I'm from Pomona, right. boy. Shout out Sugar Free. I, just, <laughs> yeah, that's how you do it. Okay, go ahead. I tried to put it in a, yeah, in an exquisite way, but he, it's true. It's, it's true. true. If you stay ready, you never, you never have to get ready. Um, so that just means being in the right frame of mind, preparing uh this is a, in the earlier segment earlier show you did you guys were talking about uh preparation and making sure you have things on calendar i mean yeah, yeah. It, it works the same way for culinary arts it's you need a syllabus you need a plan that is one of the big things that i've learned if you don't have a plan yeah uh, if, if you don't have a vision you'll perish the people will perish mm, so you have to have a plan you have to have a vision uh, those are two of the major, major things that I've, I've taken from this uh, experience. Number, number three is that for me, cooking is just a vessel. Uh, what I'm really trying to do is create emotional connections. And then we spoke about that earlier. But like you said, emotional connections are forever. The food is temporary. But if I can establish a relationship and uh, a synergy and build that, then I know that the food and my business and the way that I live life, that, that'll continue on. Yeah. So emotion in terms of experience. Correct. Man, I'm all about freaking amazing experiences, man. I don't care if it's a restaurant. If it's not amazing, I'm probably not going to spend my money there. Nope. You know, whether it's a local moco, you know, deal uh, with rice or like a Chinese restaurant or where I go eat shrimp. I mean, I just love amazing because why not? Why yeah. not have life? Be um, I think that's one thing that we lost in the industry, too. If I can briefly speak yeah, on please. that. Yeah, uh, please. I think it's more so of it's just transactional now. It's not even a thing where it's uh, I'm looking in the eye. How are you? It's like, what can I get you? And it's like, it's all, it's emotionless. It's like, it, it feels like that restaurant in Vegas or that the bar in Vegas where it's just completely controlled by robotic arms. And, and I feel like that's where the industry's going, but we as a people, we can stop that. We can realize and, and gain that romance back uh, why we actually got into the, the position that we're in now or the restaurant industry and we can change that. And that's one thing that I'm petitioning everywhere that I go. Uh, I try to, if, I, if I'm having a dining experience and it's not going well, I'll try to be that light so that, you know, uh, maybe that reflection from myself to the server or myself to the chef, if it's Benihana's or whatever, like they'll see like, oh, wow, this is probably, this is the way that I'm supposed to behave. So I think we as a people in the industry, we can change that we, and we need to. So I'm calling you all out in the restaurants. We need to stand up. Mm. We need to make sure that we're delivering that guest experience at a high level at all times. And, and if you don't like a job, get out. Mm. Get out. Go. Don't ruin it for everybody else, guys. Hashtag real talk. And, yeah. And don't bash my page for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's the truth. We need to. We need to. Yep, it's that's just something real talk. we need to do. Yep. I love that. Challenging the industry. It's your yeah. industry. Yeah. Right? And yeah. everybody's going to reflect either good or bad in it. I mean, because in America, man, we eat out like crazy. Yes. Right? The yes. market share is out there. And guess what? The people that do do it, they're going to gain more market share. And yep. those that don't are going to lose it. Okay, when I say this, when I say Executive Chef Mike Ford, what does living your best life mean to you? What does that mean? 
Hmm. Just all pistons firing, living my best life. The first thing that comes to mind is just being at the top of my game. Mm. Just top of my game meaning like all my ducks are in a row, like I'm planning properly. I have the right people in the right places. Um, it just means like everything's working for the good for me. And I believe that I'm at that level. And I always say I'm at that level because I'm speaking my future into my present. Mm -hmm. But I want to also say living my best life. I'm just like, you got me on that one. Living no, that's my best life. Wow. I, I, as, as a one-on-one -on -one coach, a group coach, and a person that speaks in over 27 industries, I just feel that if we don't know what that best life is, then we get what life wants to give us. True. That right? is true. So right now, because in your profession and you don't have kids, your best life is about work, rightfully so. Because right. right now, that is your that is your partner, your spouse, your yeah. passion, in your right? And then when you start to become, uh, you, you get married and you have kids, then it's no longer about me. It's about the welfare, well-being of the people around me. Right. So now that I say that, so that can give you some context, let's start professionally. In your best life, you already started, right? Have your ducks in a row, know what you want right. to do, and firing on all cylinders. But for your soul, in terms of your fulfillment, not just your success and achievement, Right. What does living your best life mean? I've always had that answer inside and pardon me for not disclosing it. But it's, no, it's all good. As soon as you kind of elaborated on that balance just popped in, just Ooh. balance. I need balance. Like if it's with with the job, the relationship, my spirituality, the family time, like finance, like I just want right. to be balanced, That's balanced right. and all. And, and, and I know like I've heard it out there where you can't really achieve balance, but I don't believe that. Yeah. I believe that the balance that you feel for yourself that makes you whole is that's the balance that I want to achieve for myself. No, that's a great point. So this is the number one life coaching question out there on the entire planet. Coach, how do I get more balance in my life? That's the number one question. In terms of there being a 50-50 split between work and family, there's no such thing. I mean, it's a 40 hour work week, so five days, right? Yeah. You got to grind. There's no way around that. So the way it is that I explain balance to my one-on-one -on -one clients and in all the industries I speak in is priority. You feel the sense of balance when you are prioritizing the things that you must to get things done. Therefore, you feel this level of balance. And I would only add to that what Albert Einstein says is life is like riding a bike to keep your balance, you must keep moving. Ah, and so I'm always talking nice. about keeping it moving, keeping it rolling, right? Yeah. Because that's the only time. Because any time that you're stagnant, you're not growing. No, you're not. You're not. And, and then so now there's uh, an imbalance because you're not making any money. So now when I say that and you say, okay, so living my best life is having this balance. You got about 30 seconds to respond on that. And we're going to close out on the show. Yeah. Well, I've. If I can refer back to the other segment, I was really Please. impressed. Really impressed with your last interview that you did. For those that <laughs> didn't see it or hear yeah, it, rather, yeah, yeah, yeah. I highly recommend that you check it out. But just uh, as the young lady was saying about speaking about educating yourself, my mom mm -hmm. was an educator for 40 years. Like you have to keep moving, you have to keep learning. That's right. And in my industry, that just it holds so true. You have to keep bettering yourself and being the best. And that may, means studying the industry, becoming a SME, subject matter expert. Oh, I like that. Okay. Yeah. So the number one aspect of a life coach that we teach or a success coach that we teach is happiness is found not in the feeling or in other people, but in your individual progress. Yes. That's when we feel like Deep. things are yeah. balanced, right? Is happiness. But that's the number one question is balance. So, final words. Final words. This is it? For you. I don't want on this, this to one, be we'll, over. We'll be, back. we'll be back again. 2020, we'll be back All right. again. That's right around the corner. Yeah, what are your final words uh, about this experience being on Island Block Radio's The Coach V Show, about 
a couple tidbits real quick about and then how do we i mean can we find you on these food apps can we find you on instagram linkedin facebook tell us what your handles are so currently yes i'm on instagram and we're expanding moving forward but you can find me on instagram at your plate mate i um i manage the page myself and a small team so we're very we're very personal we can send us a message we'll contact you right away my number is on there uh, you can definitely find me. I'm very accessible. Um, but to, you know, just being on this show, this is what I think the world needs more I of. That. We need to come together. We need to. I mean, I've reached out to some folks on Instagram and they'll, they'll remain nameless. Uh, and just asking for help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just, hey, love what you did there. Tell me a little bit about it. Inside radio silence. We need, we need to come together. We all have our own specialties. I mean, Coach V, you do what you do, but honestly, like if someone came behind you, often copy, but never duplicate it. I Don't be afraid that. to share. And that's yeah, yeah. one thing that I want to just put out there and, and, and just appreciate you guys for, for helping me out and sharing this experience with me. So. Oh man, it is our pleasure. That's Executive Chef Mike Ford. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Please reach out to him or reach out to me if you need to get a hold of him. I know a lot of folks out there all over the country and all over California that if you need to get a hold of Executive Chef Mike Ford, please reach out to us. A rising star is a person that is growing quickly in a popularity importance and support in a particular field thank you to island block radios coach v shows rising star mr mike ford for yeah. coming in studio we thank appreciate you, you thank you thank you mike, thank you so much for coming on the show thank I and you the guys island block family uh wish you success prosperity joy and more hashtag foodie moments with your boy <laughs> may everything you cook bring all your dreams hopes and aspirations to come true this is the coach v show and this is how we live this success coach, keynote speaker, radio show host, and author lives. All about faith and family. Grateful for God's amazing grace. Tune in every Mono Motivation Monday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to the Coach V Show, where iron sharpens iron. Together we rise on Island Block Radio, the pulse of the Pacific, where paradise lives. <laughs>